Hey everyone, what up? Matt Kaiser here. Well, 22 was a good year for video games, and we had tons of good ones. So, I thought, why not do a top 5 favorite games for 2022? Now, note that I don't have played a lot of games released last year, so don't expect like God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, Live Alive Remake, Triangle Strategy, Horizon Forbidden West those kind of games to be on my list. And, of course, this is my personal opinion. And note that some of them will have spoiler tags, so... Be advised, if you haven't played any of these games, I do recommend that you stop watching the video or skip to the next one that's a little bit less spoiler free. Anyway, with that, without further ado, let's begin the list. Coming at number 5, we have Star Ocean and Divine Force. Now this game I consider to be a comeback after that the series has gone a bit of a downhill trend after Star Ocean 5's lackluster reputation. Now this game has added a lot of things like having a more open world environment and being able to have an emphasis on exploration with your little Duma being able to fly and traverse around all the areas, cliffs and platforms while collecting Duma points, items, all that stuff making very an addictive collector fun but not only that, but Duma is also used for combat now while the combat may be a little bit different compared to past entries it's also quite fun having different types of chain combo trees to customize and make your own combos as well as having stuff like the blind side and vanguard assault to really dish out the pain and really just make the combat a lot more fun as well as to prevent bun smashing with the whole AP system couple that with having a skill tree where you can use to customize your characters and have you know true true progression than any other game in the series then overall you just have a very good combat system that's quite different but also fun. The characters were also very good and I even liked the split story route which overall made an entertaining run to go through both sides being Letitia and Raymond. So yeah, overall the f exploration is very good, combat is awesome, music is pretty nice and there's a lot of things to enjoy side content wise like the Asoa mini game as well as some good private actions and some good you know, boss dungeons. However, there are things that do hold us back. Mostly technical issues, such as the fact that for a while this game had some really shoddy performance, especially if you're playing this on the PS5 with frame rate prioritized. Not only that, but stuff like the pop in and the fact that some characters, overall, just the character animations of them, you know, talking just looks a bit stiff and just really odd as well as the fact that the UI is ridiculously small to read as well as for a while before this game got patched that when certain characters would leave the party when they come back they remove their accessories though thankfully that patch has removed that issue but overall despite those issues and the fact that this game didn't have a budget didn't have much of a budget and this is probably a sleep hit for 2022 in terms of JRPGs. Honestly, if you're a fan of Star Ocean or a fan of JRPGs in general, I highly recommend checking out Star Ocean Divine Force, especially now since some of the patches do fix some issues I have with the game. Number 4, we have Bayonetta 3. Now, this game has been anticipated for a lot of my fans, especially since its release, well, its, you know, initial teaser since, what, 2017, I think, and people have been waiting so long for Bayonetta 3, but alas, it's finally here, and I have to say, the wait was pretty worth it. Now, Bayonetta 3 is a different kind of beast, but still the familiar one that we all know and love. Bayonetta, of course, the combat is what the game and as well as the series exceeds in. With Bayonetta playing similar to how she was in 2 1 and 2, but adding new moves, 
like being able to use now kaijus, doing her combos, which will make some really awesome, just you know, overall fun and just engaging combat. And the way you use them in multiple scenarios, whether it's like after you hit an enemy or even doing witch time, as well as having things like as well as a new skill tree instead of buying new moves where you can expand your new moves, you can expand your demons to unlock new moves for them as well as multiple weapons you have which each of them playing different and a lot of variety and experimentation to see which one is your fancy coupled that with puzzles that really test your demon's abilities other than just combat as well as there's some cool set pieces like always a banger soundtrack of course and exploration is a lot more bigger allowing you to freely roam a bit more finding things like those umbrella tier things as well as chests that will give you challenges to get more crystals as well as other things in terms of variety and as well not only that but Viola next playable character is actually pretty fun while she may not be as good being the is she's still pretty fun using a sword and using a combo and being able to summon her chest here not only that but overall some of the bosses are pretty good and with being a free going back to a witch time as well as tons of other content that this game offers then i have to say that being a free overall is a very good game just however it's held back by a lot of things wrong number one is that while this game is running on a Switch and mostly runs at 60 FPS, sometimes the game can look a little bit jagged in areas and overall that there are some performance dips and for a while before the patch, the camera was all over the place. Not only that, but while I do like playing Viola, her witch time block thing was a little bit off-putting and not well refined, though thankfully as I said, a nut patch did improve upon that. Another thing is that John's stealth levels are honestly just kind of dull and just boring with not that much to it despite like an overtop intro and outro. And the story. Now I know Bayonetta is not well regarded for just its stories but honestly Bayonetta Free's story it did have some cool moments like the whole multiverse thing and meeting other variants but overall the story was all a mess. And the ending, yeah, the ending is quite controversial and I won't spoil it for those who haven't played it, but yeah, that ending, that ending alone has gained some controversy and for a good reason, unfortunately. But criticism aside, this is overall a fantastic game and I'm interested to see what potentially the series has gone moving on forward. Especially that now that this year we're getting a Bayonetta spin-off of Bayonetta Origins. So overall, Bayonetta 3 is just a fun time. Number 3 we have Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Now I have to be perfectly honest with you guys. I've never played a Kirby game in my life before. My only exposure to the Pink Puff was well with the anime and just playing him in Smash Bros, Ultimate, and Brawl. But I have to say, playing Kirby in Forgotten Land has made me a fan and made me interested to check out the other entries that the Pink Puff has. Kirby in Forgotten Land is the very first game in the series to go into fully 3D, and I have to say, the transition was really well smooth. Overall, the game looks absolutely gorgeous, especially for a Switch title especially with its cute art style the level design and platforming really test well with Kirby's abilities and while there may not be a lot of copy abilities all of them are pretty fun and thanks to the new upgrade system you can even make your copy abilities even stronger it really adds well to the gameplay and just makes it fun the soundtrack is pretty good and the, and the way they have the collectibles of saving the all these as well as having hidden bits where you find other collectible items all that stuff just truly makes exploration through the levels just all the more worth it it's just a lot of fun the music is awesome and the bosses oh my god the bosses 
These are some truly fantastic bosses. I especially love that Kirby even has a perfect dodge to dodge and counterattack those enemies, where it just slows down time and you know counters attacks and like like he is Bayonetta Kirby, like he learned from Bayonetta and Smash, I would assume. But overall, yeah, not too much to say. I just really love Kirby and Forgotten Land. There's a huge post-game that they also have that I'm currently playing with. I also enjoyed so many games like the Boss Rush Coliseum, as well as the Fishing and Lunch Lunch minigame. And overall, this was such a good vibe, this game. And honestly, I can't wait to play more Kirby games, especially when there's a new one called Return to Dreamland Deluxe. And I'm excited to see what the other games that are on this Switch have. So yeah, well done Kirby. Well done, Howl Labs. And number two we have is Sonic Frontiers. Now this game really took me by surprise. And initially, obviously, compared to other games in the list, I think Sonic Frontiers might have more problems than all of those games. So, why not just address what's wrong with this? Yeah, the popping is annoying as well as the fact that there are some times when the game transitions to 2D it really goes a bit off especially against a 3D open environment some of the cyber stage levels weren't just that good and overall the true final boss was just well lame having said that while this game may have done some things wrong when the things has done right it is monumental First for the fact is that this game really controls well, like especially for a boosting game some kind, so it controls well and going through the open environment at this speed in a Sonic game just is just so fun to do, as well as even doing a lot of the puzzles that make me want to explore the map and gain new things. All the platforming challenges really encourages you to truly test Sonic's abilities. Not only that, I absolutely love the combat system and this is probably the best combat system in any Sonic game period. It may have like a small simple skill tree and not a lot of moves as you expect but I have to say it was pretty fun taking down different types of enemies and using them against certain enemies that become harder throughout each island. Not only that, but of course the music is awesome, and while I wasn't a big fan of cyberspace, I have to say I do like some of the levels based on Adventure 2, I have to say. Not only that, but Big mini Fishing Minigame is fun, and another high point is the story. This has to be the best, Sonic Frontiers has one of the best stories in the Sonic game period, like oh my god, this is the best Sonic game story we had in a decade, where all the characters were fully realized and back to their original selves that we know and love them through the adventure games and even games like say Unleashed and maybe even Black Knight in a sense. Like obviously I absolutely love what they did for Sonic, Knuckles, Amy, and especially Tails. Where Tails alone gets a redemption after his rather hated and abysmal scene from Forces. You know that one. Not only that, but I think Dr. Eggman was really done well on how he's written, and Sage was also a good addition to the cast. But of course, another highlight is the bosses, especially the Titan fights. Knight, Giganto, Wyvern, all of them were pretty good. Yes, there's one. yes, the final one, Supreme, was not that good, but other than that, those three alone, those earlier three were just so awesome. Some of the best boss fights we had in a Sonic game, and with some killer, killer music. Honestly, the, the game as a whole, while it may not be perfect, and definitely is, and this game truly, truly made me be glad that I was a Sonic fan and actually made me happy for the franchise. Now learning that this game will have now free upcoming DLC for the rest of this year, but not only that, alongside the fact that this game is a 
lot to send to the groundwork for future Sonic games. Then I have to say that for once, I'm actually excited for Sonic's future. Couple of this with the awesome Sonic movie, the relatively okay but kind of fun Sonic Origins collection, and also Sonic Prime, which was also pretty neat. And I have to say, 2022 was definitely a renaissance for the Blue Blur. Thank you, Sonic. I'm glad to be a Sonic fan. And my number one game of the year is Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Now, I really love Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, as you guys see in my video, and I equally love Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I also enjoyed Future Connected and absolutely loved Torna. So I was wondering how Xenoblade 3 would compare and possibly even top those two. Well, I'm glad to say they did. And just like the series I played, it wowed me. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was an absolute masterful game. For one, the story was truly incredible with a fully well realized cast, all of them completely likable, all of them having very just fun and likable personalities, and majority of them just going through development and making some of my favorite cast, as well as much as equally from Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade 2's cast. Not only that, but I absolutely love the open environments as well, like I think this is probably my favorite open world Xenoblade game out of three lot. This game had a lot of love and care put into it. The combat was pretty good and I absolutely loved the new class system, as well as having a combination of the art from both Xenoblade 1 and 2 and it was blended so well together as well as the class system was really deaf and changing different classes to experiment and figure out which one was really good and which one suited for the task was really well fun. The side quests were really done, especially the hero quests which were, in my opinion, just great as the main story itself. The music was phenomenal, absolutely wonderful and there was just lots of goodies and content to go over that just is masterful. Now, while it is not perfect, of course it isn't perfect, like you can say that some things may hinder it just a bit. When you look at the positives, and these are a lot of positives, these positives out overall just outweigh the negatives by a ton. I love everything about from the voice acting, the characters, the story, the side quests, the combat, the overall music, and just the presentation alone, like, good god. This is one of the best looking Switch games as well. Marlis Soft has done it again of giving us a banger game and to hear that we are going to get a new expansion story pass coming this year has truly made me excited. This as well as Xenoblade 1 and 2 and expansions has cemented the Xenoblade series as one of my favorite GRPG series of all time and I'm honestly glad I got into this last year. Anyway, that is my list for my top 5 favorite games of 2022. So, what are your favorite games from 2022? Let me know down in the comments below. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching, so punch that like button, drop down a comment, and click the subscribe button if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mad Kaiser, out. <laughs>